Hey everybody, welcome back to Chats About Blindness, episode three. And today I wanna to talk about sunwear, cause it's just so cool. Um, what I am wearing right now are called Vistanas. They're fit over sunglasses, so I don't have to get prescription sunglasses. And I can get whatever color is necessary for me. So there's a lot that goes into sunwear. And I think this is important for sighted people as much as it is for blind people. So there is a little bit of a stereotype that everyone who is blind wears sunglasses. Well, that's not necessarily true. Um, sunglasses actually do a job for a lot of people with vision impairments. So I'm sure I look like I'm squinting a little bit right now because I'm outside and I took off my sunglasses. Um, there is a particular condition that's called photophobia, light sensitivity. A lot of people have it. You don't even have to have any other real um, loss of eye, or loss of vision to have photophobia. Sunglasses are really important. They protect our eyes, especially if you have that UV protection, which is pretty much on most sunglasses now. But people who have vision impairments really do need that little extra protection and sometimes sunglasses will help them be able to navigate better. So if we're taking off that glare, so quite often they're referred to as glare filters, um, and you have to go through a little uh, exam where you literally just try on multiple different colors of sunglasses to find which one cuts the glare. Now some of the most common colors are gray, like this one, uh, or you'll see green. And I'm actually seeing amber a lot more, which is great because amber can be a very, very helpful color. Now me, I put on amber sunglasses and it makes my eyes hurt more. <laughs> but for a lot of people, amber is a really good color. But you really want to find out what color is best for you. The same goes for somebody who is blind. So again, going back to that stereotype where everybody who's blind wears sunglasses. Some people who have no light perception wear them because they like the look or they have all their different reasons. But honestly, what I promote it for, it, the main reason is they're protecting their eyes. So let's think about this. Uh, if you can't see something coming at you, then you don't know to close your eyelids or flinch away from it, right? So even somebody with no light perception will quite often wear sunglasses just to protect their eyes from anything that might be coming towards them that they're not gonna notice. And so that helps them keep irritation on their eyes and keep things out of their eyes that normally we would see coming with sight and we close our eyes. So that can be why somebody, and everybody has lots of reasons for wearing sunglasses, but that might be why somebody with no light perception would wear sunglasses. People who have light perception or any other kind of functional vision will wear sunglasses more often than not because glare really hurts their eyes. Now, I'm, I'm still squinting a little bit right now. No, I, I know I am. Um, but different colors will help decrease glare. And so we will quite often with low vision optometrists or certified low vision therapists like myself, will do what are called glare assessments. And as I said, it's literally trying on different colored sunglasses outside in sunny weather and inside in your normal lighting with usually having to do with some kind of really bright light inside. Um, and you find out what colors are going to help decrease the glare of that light. So you might actually see, see people walking around wearing uh, kind of a rosy colored glasses. This is outside, you see them wearing amber glasses, rosy glasses, gray glasses, dark blue, dark green. And it's because that particular color is actually cutting glare for them. So maybe they have, um, I don't know, let's say uh, age-related macular degeneration and they are still getting a lot of um, light sensitivity, especially outside or something. And they have found uh, their, their vision is not great. You know, you think, oh, if you put on sunglasses, you can see less. Yes and no. Um, but really what they're trying to do is stop that glare and, and stop some of that pain that comes from photophobia. 
Um, and it, I think it's really important, like I said, this is actually an important topic for people who are sighted and people who are blind or visually impaired because we want to protect your eyes. So I highly recommend that even if you are sighted, you have no other vision impairments, you still try to get a, a glare assessment. Find out what's the right color for you. And uh, everybody's gonna be a little bit different. You might get 10 people who all like amber or five people in a group who all like gray. Um, or you might get the people I've, I have handed out blue glasses and I've handed out green glasses. Um, and these are more often than not, these are fit overs that I get. Whether the person is actually wearing the sun uh, glasses underneath the sunglasses or not, we like the fit over because it stops light from coming in the top and coming in the bottom and coming in the sides. So now these have, uh, you can see, I can see through the sides of mine. And that's the same with a lot of the, the glasses that we use. Uh, I use a lot of uh, sunwear from NoIR, N-O-I-R is how it's spelled. Um, and they're really great. Now they're big and they're kind of bulky, but they really do block that glare. So it's not necessarily, it's a stereotype that I really wanna uh, get people to look beyond because you can also help your own vision as well um, in using proper sunwear when you're out on a sunny day. Now, I am also somebody who I have light sensitivity even on cloudy days. In fact, sometimes it's more painful to my eyes on a cloudy day than it is on a sunny day. And so I'll be wearing my sunglasses in my car on cloudy days, sunny days. Oh my gosh, snowy days are painful. It's like a, a, a this bright white light that's everywhere is very painful on my eyes. And so I'm really grateful for these because I can just pop these suckers on. And I mean, even just putting them on right now and I'm sitting in shade, I could feel my eyes relax as I put them on. Um, and anybody who knows me knows I walk around all year round with my sunglasses on my head. If they're not over my glasses, they're on my head. So I can pop them down really quick if I find myself in a situation. And yes, I have found myself wearing sunglasses indoors, depending on the lighting that is inside. There's one store um, that's really difficult for me to walk through, and that would be some Walmarts and Hobby Lobby, because the lights are so bright in there. And other people can be sensitive to different kinds of lighting, and I'm super sensitive to that kind of a blue white light that you see in most stores. And so it's, I, I have actually been known to wear my gray sunglasses into some stores. Now there are particular colors that quite often will help with indoor lighting. Uh, you'll see shades of red, you'll see shades of orange and yellow. And actually yellow can help with nighttime glare, that glare that we get off of um, uh, headlights from cars, especially the the really, really, really painfully bright headlights. So yellow glasses that you can wear, yellow tinted glasses that you can wear even at night to help decrease that glare. So next time you are out and about and you realize, hmm, I'm squinting. Don't let yourself squint. Find the sunglasses that take away that squint. If you wanna to talk to an eye doctor about that, I recommend talking to an eye doctor. But also remember that it's not just because it's not a fashion statement for somebody who is blind. I mean, it could be, I suppose it could be a fashion statement. That's a very personal statement. But more often than not, when you see somebody who is blind or visually impaired and they're wearing sunglasses, they're wearing them for a very particular reason. And that is to really stop the glare of light from causing pain. And quite often, once they take that glare down, then they're able to use that little bit of functional, that whatever amount of functional vision that they have, they're able to use that vision to be able to better navigate around their environment. Um, while I've had, and while it's not generally meant to do so, I have actually had some people tell me when they find the right pair of colored sunglasses, the right color, 
not only does it decrease the glare, but sometimes it kind of sharpens their vision a little bit. And by sharpens, I don't mean make it perfect. I mean, it gives a little bit more definition to something that has previously been so very blurry. And it just gives a tiny bit of definition to it. And I think maybe that's because they're not squinting as much and they're not trying to, you know, work through that pain of the, the glare on their eyes from the sunglasses. And I just realized you can see every shadow on me, including the light ring on my phone. But you know what? That's okay. I don't care. Um, we're gonna, I really encourage you guys to check out sunglasses. Now, the second thing that I wanted to kind of touch base on, um, I've talked about a little bit in other videos and I just kind of want to make this point we're kind of switching gears right now and going in another direction um, I just wanted to make this point that uh, when you are a driver and I'm making this point right now because I I recently just I had a, a, a lesson where I had drivers just constantly stopping where there was no stop sign and I was trying to teach the individual how to analyze an intersection and the intersection was literally is a, a plus intersection so it's shaped like a plus sign and it was one street had the right of way and one street had stop sign so it's a two-way stop but every person who came by as we stood on that corner on the road that had the right of way came to a stop so as I'm trying to explain how you analyze an intersection, we use sound to analyze intersections. More often than not, we're going to use sound. And when you have somebody <clears throat> in a vehicle who is stopping where there is no stop sign, and it's not a mid-street crossing, whereas mid-street crossings you're supposed to stop, it's your regular intersection, there is no stop sign for you, and you stop anyway. Can I please ask all drivers to not do that? If there is somebody who is on the corner, and they have a long white cane, and you see them standing, and they're facing the road that has the right of way, that means they want to cross that road, yes. But they're taught, especially if there's just no good functional visions for them to use, they're taught to use sounds and they're taught to analyze an intersection. And what that means is a two way stop when they're trying to cross the street that doesn't have a stop sign, don't stop because what you're telling them is actually that intersection is a four way stop and there's a different a uh, set of techniques that go with crossing a four-way stop, different things that you are listening to. But just because you stop doesn't mean somebody else will stop. So if you have, is there, if this is a new intersection and you stop where there is no stop sign, you are telling them it is a four-way intersection when it is in fact a two-way intersection. So they're going to treat it as a four-way intersection. So I am begging drivers, please, yes, keep an eye out for all pedestrians with a cane, without a cane, always keep an eye out for pedestrians. But I am begging you, especially when you see somebody with a cane, please don't change the tra traffic pattern because that traffic pattern is what the individual is looking for. They need to hear it. And I know this is coming from a good place in your heart and you just wanna give this person the right of way, you wanna try to make their day a little bit easier. But in fact, you are actually making that moment in time for them harder and more dangerous because you're telling them that this intersection is one way when it is not. So maybe you're stopping, but that doesn't mean another person's not going to stop. So please, 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 when you are driving and you see somebody on a street corner waiting to cross the street with a long white cane, continue with the proper traffic pattern. And please don't honk to tell the person that they can cross. Don't call out your car to tell the person that they can cross and don't gesture with your hand to tell the person that they can cross. I always tell everybody that I work with that one of the number one rules is the only person who decides when to cross the street is you, nobody else. So let's just keep all the traffic patterns moving as they are supposed to be moving. I understand 99.9% .9 of the time people are just trying to be polite. Appreciate that. That's very kind of you, but you're 
actually not helping as much as you might think you are. So to sum up, whether you are blind or sighted, sunwear is very important to protect your eyes, not just from the light, but also from any kind of any little debris or anything coming at your eyes. And secondly, follow traffic patterns. Follow the appropriate traffic patterns. I'm begging you. And I hope everybody has a wonderful weekend and enjoying this nice cooler weather that we're getting, well, depending on where in the country you're at. Um, here on the East Coast, we're getting a little bit cooler weather and it's kind of nice. So have a great weekend. Wear your sunglasses, follow your traffic patterns, and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.